I don't know how, but every time I watch a film from Robert Eggers and Jerome Blaschke, I'm transported into that world from the first frame. And in today's video, I want to take a look at how they did it in The Northman, which is sort of a follow up from last week's video on The Lighthouse. Anyway, in today's video, I'm of course going to be covering the equipment Blaschke used, how he lit the scenes to look so incredibly natural, as well as how he and Eggers crafted the authentic look. I've mentioned before that the majority of period dramas on this scale are shot on film, and it's absolutely no different here. However, I did notice that a lot of the film was shot using daylight balance stocks, and I really can't remember the last time I saw that happen. Anyway, as for the cameras, Blaschke went with the Ariflex 235, 435 ES, and Panavision's Millennium XL2. Now, the 235 is the optimal camera for handheld and steadicam work. It's lightweight and smaller than its counterparts, the 435, in which Blaschke used the ES version, ES standing for extreme, which in simple terms introduced electronic features including fast ramping speed capability and further motion control. As for the XL2, we've all heard of this one. It's Panavision's flagship 35mm film camera, it's also rather lightweight, but can be converted to a studio mode or a steadicam mode if needed. Now, with authenticity in the Viking era, you'd imagine that the cinematography would be quite dirty. However, Blaschke was after a clean look for the film, wanting crisp lenses, minimal distortion, and no funky optical texture, his words, not mine. Which is why he went with Panavision's Primo lenses, and only the Primos. With their high contrast and resolution, minimal veiling glare, ghosting and distortion, they were the perfect choice. As for the film stock, Blaschke opted for Kodak's Vision 350D, 250D and 200T, which I found to be quite an interesting choice, as it's rare to see films shot mostly on daylight balance stocks, or at least I found it quite rare. All this does though is suggest that Blaschke used daylight balance lights and that they preferred the cooler look. Now if you want to know the difference between daylight and tungsten and film stock in general, check out this video in the top right corner and description below. When it comes to the lighting, we could tell from the trailers that it was going to be pretty natural, with elements of heightened realism. And what I mean by that is that there are scenes that feel natural, authentic, but have elements that make them look incredible. For example, a kicker that acts almost like a halo. Ironically though, in order to get the authentic look that Eggers was after, Blaschke had to introduce an incredible amount of artificial light, and I only say ironically because there are a huge amount of people that assume these films were shot completely in natural light. People assume that our movies are all in natural light, but we use a lot of electricity. All the firelight is actually tight grids of 500 watt bulbs. Now, if we look at the interior shots, especially the ones once they arrive to Feng's village, the lighting feels very stereotypical of the Viking era. It's low key, at daytime quite cold, and we fall into shadow very quickly, which, to go into detail, could potentially portray immorality within the characters. On the other hand, the outside has very broad lighting. Rob greatly prefers soft light and gloom for day exteriors. Ireland gives you overcast light 80% of the time inherently, so it was a very good location for him in that regard. In creating an authentic feel, Blaschke really had to chase the natural aspect of the lighting, replicating natural light, or in a more technical term, amplifying it. Now, the scenes by the fire really show how far Blaschke went, because we can all flick a switch on a light and replicate fire, but he also creates depth, not only through his use of shadows, but also haze and smoke. And I know that fire naturally produces smoke anyway, but I can't count the amount of films I've seen this effect used without just adding haze. Come live always without fear, for your fate is set and you cannot escape it. Swear! Now, in a way, the look of this is very similar to that of The Lighthouse and The Witch, and I don't mean in the same style, as obviously one is in black and white, but they all share the same authenticity and raw feel. I think I need to start with the use of long takes though, as this is one of the few tools that can easily transport us into the world of the characters. There are no breaks, we aren't being thrown around in the cutting room, we are simply existing with them and being shown their true selves. When asked what the long takes achieve, Blaschke said, I think the way in which we shot it is the most immersive way to present something, and conveys the illusion of something that exists infinitely beyond the frame. Roma and Andre Rublev 
were both very inspiring in this regard. To touch on the movements, I feel as though it's used in a very similar way to most other films of this calibre, and that's restrained. We aren't thrown into handheld at the slightest hint of violence, we aren't static and are usually on a dolly or crane, but it helps orientate us, much like in the use of the long takes. For a movie so formal, it helps to have the character engagement that a tight eyeline gives you. Rob and I both love illustration, so whenever a frame can look like an illustration or icon, we go for it. We have to talk about the colour when it comes to the look of a film, because it's arguably the most important aspect, and in this, it really helps convey the environment that our characters are in. It's not only a dark moment in history, but it's also quite a subdued setting, so it's only right that Blaschke would desaturate the image by around 15% to be exact. He also discovered that he was really averse to having large amounts of green in the final image, which, when your film is mostly set in a field, is quite hard. However, he fixed this by also taking the green channel down by an additional 15%. Now, if we were to look at the meaning behind the colour, we could obviously interpret it in a number of ways, but here I don't think we really need to. We are told everything from the muted colours. The fact that it's a soft blue doesn't really affect the overall feel of a shot. Sure, it instinctively makes us feel as though this is a darker moment, but that would happen with any colour in this scenario. We also have the juxtaposition of a few black and white scenes, and these create a sort of uncertainty for the future of the film. The next turn of events is now being decided on, and to be specific, I'm talking about that scene with Bjork. When it comes to choosing the aspect ratio, you really have to think carefully, as it's one of the most important aspects about how your audience will view the film. And we've seen Eggers and Blaschke play around with it before, using 1.66 on The Witch and 1.19 to 1 on The Lighthouse, so it's no surprise here that they went with something that they felt was right for the story, that being the 2x1 frame, otherwise known as Univisium. The 2x1 frame was the widest rectangle that felt universal and timeless to us. It had some parallels in classical paintings for instance. Vittorio Storaro might have been onto something with Univisium. Overall, Blaschke yet again outdid himself. He managed to transport all of us back a thousand years to the Viking era, doing so through strategic lighting, a strong colour grade, and a timeless aspect ratio, as well as many other things. To me, it seems like this film had very little studio interference, and unlike some of the other comments that I've seen floating around, it did really feel like an Eggers project. He just had more extravagant sets, more actors, and more time. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video, you know what to do if you did. If you have a recommendation for an analysis, leave it down below. Thank you so much for watching, and maybe I'll see you next time. Bye!